academybeliever.com forward slash creator four dot pdf. Amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. <laughs> I told you we was a hole in this church. <laughs> amen. Well, God is the creator of everything. Look at someone say he made everything. God is the creator of everything. There's nothing that was made that he didn't make. He said he made it all. He also loves all that he has made, especially what? Man. So in the garden, during creation, he made something and then he said, that's good. He made some more things. That's good. And then he made man and proved that that was more important because he made him in his image and his likeness. So especially man. He loves mankind. He loves you. Look at somebody say he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He, God is not trying to put you in hell. He does not want you to go to hell. He is speaking to you right now through this microphone to keep you from going to hell. He wants you to live forever with him because he loves you. You ever just look at your child and just love him? Like, it's unexplainable sometimes. Why am I crazy about this boy and he crazy? <laughs> Keep me up all night long. Won't let me sleep. And I still like him. Amen. So, he also loves all that he's made. Out of all that he has created, mankind is the only creature that he is going to preserve forever. That's how much he loves you. Out of everything that he has created, mankind is the only creature that he's going to preserve forever. That's all men. Every man, all men, women, cheering, all men, everyone will be preserved forever. He loves you enough to preserve you. So he, when he built you, he put that in you. He put something in you that will last forever. And that's your soul. He made your soul immortal. Because he loved you. That's the only way you can be with him. His plan for us is to be with him for eternity. John 14 and 2. In my father's house are what? Many mansions. Man, you looking for a big house now that you can't afford? Won't you just wait and get the mansion? You don't have to put nothing on that. But your life. Put some good living on that. We all excited about houses and stuff like that. I'm telling you, you know, there was a time, man, when I was living in the house we were living in before we moved, God had to almost kick me out of the house I was in because I was good for the rest of my life. I was so happy to be somewhere. I was good. Just I stay right here. And my wife was pregnant, and the Lord was like, will you go find a house, please? But I was good, because, I mean, right now, I mean, I'm not like nice stuff, but right now, man, especially the way the world is going, yeah, it just ain't all that. I'm trying to get the mansion. Amen. See, and then we try to use our mind to think on how this mansion is going to be. Like, oh, what is it going to be? We just going to be singing and praising all day. I don't want to do that. Look at somebody, ooh, that's just deep. No, man, you know it ain't going to be like that. Every time you wake up, eh, no, there ain't no sleep. It's just all day. Yeah. Eternity. I mean, can we change the key or something? This is modulate, yes. No, 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 no. No, 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 but that's our earthly mind trying to think like a creator. 
But see, if you had created everything, you wouldn't have made man. You, you wouldn't have made this. Because you're not a, look at somebody say, you're not a creator. So what you consider pleasure now is only because it was created that way for you. <laughs> yeah, but you can't create it because you're not a creator. So don't be trying to think of what heaven is going to be like if you're not a creator. God called it a kingdom. A kingdom means they're rulers. There is no kingdom without rulers. That's the kingship of the kingdom. So if we're going to be in a kingdom as rulers, that means there's going to be a lesser group that we will rule over. There is no kingdom in everybody's kings. But our minds can't go there. You mean he's going to make something? I don't know. He said kingdom. I wouldn't have made this earth like this because I can't think like that because I'm not a creator. You excited about a full bedroom house? Posting it all online or whatever? Just imagine a mansion that a creator made and prepared for you. But you can't imagine it because you're not a creator. In my father's house, there are what? Many mansions. We don't have a house here on earth with many mansions. So you can't, nobody can even think of that. How do you make a house with many mansions inside of it? Our realm will not allow for it. It doesn't make any logical visual sense to us. Shoot, I want my bad check. And then Jesus said, if it weren't so, I would have told you. If it was just a myth, if folks were just saying this, I would have told you. He said, but it's more than a myth because I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now, can you imagine the disciples? Jesus is saying, I'm going. And then one day, he just starts going. And they're all looking like, dude, did you see that? He's going. Like, it wasn't, I'm going, like, I'm going to die, and I'll be there, and holla at y'all later. No, it's like, hey, y'all, there's Jesus. He's back. How did he get back? Oh, y'all shocked at me getting back? Watch this. And he goes. And the Bible said the same way he went is the way he's going to come back. Look at somebody say, I want to see that. <laughs> Man, I'm going. Oh, no. Look at somebody say, I don't know about you, but I'm going back with him. You thought the Titan was something. The roller coaster, you thought that was a thrill. Let me float on out of here and meet the Lord in the clouds and be with him forever and grab the keys to my mansion that is in the Father's house. Man, I'm on the first bullet. Am I going to make it? <laughs> Jesus came in the flesh to show us how to be with him. He lived the lifestyle that pleased the father and was an example for us. So he came in the flesh to show us how to live so we can be with him. Right? He's not Buddha. He's not Gandhi. He's not any of that foolishness. If you want to know how to live, pick up the Bible. Start at 1 John and read the book of John and see how Jesus lived because that's, that was our example of how to live. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you which was also what? 
in Christ Jesus. The same mind that was in Christ Jesus needs to be in you. He lived a lifestyle that pleased the Father and was a what? Example for us. God's divine plan is to save those that accept Jesus and eternally punish those that reject him. That's God's plan. Those that accept Jesus will be with him and saved. But those that reject him and go for the new world order, the new aged movement, the false god idolatry, all of the things of the devil, you're going to hell. Can I say that in 2020? Yeah, hell was prepared for you. It's so funny, boy. Do you believe? Yeah, I believe in God. You can't believe in God without believing in hell. Because he made hell. He said he prepared it for the devil and his angels. So all those that are with him and work with him and choose him, they're going to be with him. Eternally. In hell. Somebody's mind is just like, now wait a minute. No, no that's because society has messed with you. They've made you think God was human. And so he's going to have a feeling and a concern for those. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, that's kind of cruel. That's kind of harsh. No, sin is cruel and sin is harsh. I can't use my mind to think for God because I'm not a what? His love for us gave us immortality, but also gave us the choice as where we would spend it. So he loved you enough to make you immortal by giving you a soul, but he also gave you a choice of where that soul is going to spend eternity. Look at somebody say, that's your choice. It's your choice. Matthew 25 and 46, and thee shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into what? Life eternal. God is perfect. God is a perfect being. So unrighteousness is against who he is. So just because he's perfect, imperfection is a slight against him. Imperfection is in opposition to him because he's perfect. This is why eternal damnation is the only suitable punishment for sin. So if you're a sinner in sin, you are in opposition against him and you have to be punished eternally for it. You didn't care enough about your soul to preserve it. So if you didn't care enough about your soul, why do you expect God to care more about your soul than you care? God is putting you with your people. He's letting you be what you want to be. He loves you enough to let you be. That's what you're choosing. Somebody right now thinking, I mean, but some of this sin is just fun. Well, fun, fun, fun forever. He's going to let you have that fun and keep that fun forever. That's your choice. He's going to let you miss him for what you want and how you want to spend eternity. Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is what? Death. So sin just costs death. And it's not just death after you do it and feel like you wish you were dead. No, it causes death. It's going to kill. Sin is going to kill you. Eternally. That's what it costs. Because every time you sin, you hurt someone else. You're an enemy of mankind when you're in sin. And if you're an enemy of mankind, you're an enemy of God because he made and cherishes mankind. That's his creation. 
Wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life through who? Eternal punishment in hell seems harsh to modern day Christians because many sympathize with sin instead of forsaking it. So you remembering you and your sin and oh, give them a break. It just, I just don't think eternal punishment with God really do that. Look at somebody and say, you're not a creator. There's no way your mind can't think for God. And just think about this. As horrible as eternal punishment is to your brain, sin is that horrible to God. It's not that horrible to you because you're not a sinless being. So because you've been in sin before, you're going to sympathize with sin. I do. I'm preaching. Yeah, you're going to feel it. You're going to have mercy. And that's what God wants you to. He wants you to have mercy on your brothers and sisters. Yes, he wants you to give everybody a pass. Everybody. How many passes? As many passes as they need. Everybody. Just give them away. Give them away. You know why? Because you're going to need one. Save some for yourself. So God wants you giving passes left and right. Forgiving. Let them go. Let it go. Don't hold on to it. None of that. Get rid of all of that. Because you're not a just judge you're not a righteous judge you're not sinless in your judgments so you have to sympathize with sin but don't sympathize with sin to the point to where you start thinking for the creator who is sinless your judgments are not his judgments your thoughts are not his thoughts his thoughts are high above yours because if we had to live with your thoughts We'd be all living like you. God gave us higher thoughts to live up to so we can be better. Eternal punishment in hell. And so it seems harsh. And would he really do that? And Well, the Bible says he would. But the Bible also said people would be talking like this. Foolishness. 2 Timothy 4 and 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They won't even be able to sit through this truth without thinking of some way around it. Well, I was watching a video the other day and the man said that what they really thought was hell was really just show. And it don't last forever. It's more fun. You watch that on the internet, okay. So where did the person on the internet, on YouTube, get their facts well, they said, oh, have you picked up a book in the last 10 years? Do you even know what books say anymore? Everything is a video now. Y'all don't think that they planned YouTube for that? Y'all don't think that they planned everything to be a search away from your fingertips so you don't have to be taught anything? See, when you have to be taught, it teaches you two things, the information and the authority. Yeah. But when you can go and grow on your own, you're going to be a wild growth. Because you have no one to temper you and teach you the pattern of growth that, it, that you need to grow under. Yeah, that's why they vacate the church. We don't need the church. Man, I can just go online and just pull up all kinds of churches. Because the fellowship balances you out. You can only go so crazy in here and you're going to either have to leave or you're going to have to deal with authority. Right? Yeah. When you go, when you go to wilding in a group, man, brother's going to be like, all right, that's enough. You're a woman, my wife, going, you're going to get that, that pull, pulled over in the, after, after service. Come here, sis, I need to talk to you. Uh, you're wilding. And it's going to balance you out. But if you're just growing on the internet, you're going to just be a wild bush that no one can tame. Oh, wild donkey. <laughs> Nobody can tame you. Somebody tell you to do something, you just bucking and <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Nobody help you. Yeah, but they want it. They want everybody on the internet so everyone can learn on the internet. And forget the moral code of God, the, the authority of God, and the men of God. They don't want people taught like that anymore. They want it left up to you. 
you become your judge and you're not just. But the time will come when they will not endure. They won't be able to sit through sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap upon themselves teachers having engineers. They're going to find the people that's teaching what they teach, what they want taught, makes them feel good. This sounds like a good plan. This sounds like it works. This sounds like it works pretty good. It's worked for others before, so you're just going to try it. And then when God puts a real authority in your life to help you, you feel you know more than they know half their age can I keep preaching so naturally we are sympathetic to others that sin and feel hell is too great a punishment for them Ezekiel 3 and 18 says this though when I say unto the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked ways you're not telling him about hell you're not trying to save his life from hell he said the same wicked man shall die in his sin or iniquity but his blood will I what require at dying here you better look at somebody and say you better tell folks about hell I'm not teaching philosophy to you and brother, see, here's your problem, brother. You have these daddy issues. And see, because your father wasn't there, and you'd be like, ooh, 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 yeah, that's good, that's good. And see, because you're no, 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 brother, if you keep sinning, you're going to hell. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Heaven is where the saved folks go. Hell is where the sinners go. You keep living in sin, you're going to hell. Now, we can talk about the daddy issues after you make the decision on where you want to go. Where do you want to go? Because you're casting your pearl among swine. They ain't saved. What you talking about? You better make a decision like I had to. Oh, Pastor, you know, I just need some counseling. Are you saved? Well, you know, I'm almost saved. I'm almost, well, when you, when you get all the way there, give me a call and I might. I might. Fool with you. I'm in transition. <laughs> transition? What's that, a rest period? You had a rest stop? You had a spiritual rest stop like a truck? You in there getting chips and jerky? Like, what are you doing? A honey bun? <laughs> what are you doing? Transition. Can I keep going? We are not God, so we cannot know how sin makes him feel. Can I say that again? Look at somebody say, you are not God. We cannot know how sin makes God feel. We just know that it does something to him. But we, can't ex we, we don't understand how it makes him feel because we're not God. We do know that we should approach our own salvation with fear and trembling, which basically means we must consider the source of it. God is the source of our salvation, so we need to approach it with fear and trembling because we have sin. And we don't know exactly how sin makes him feel because we're not him. We know sin gets us dead. But we don't know how it makes him feel. We can't experience that. Does that make sense? Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own what? Salvation, Salvation with what? Fear. Fear and trembling. Be afraid. Because you keep doing bad stuff. You have a history of it. And you're dealing with a perfect creator. A perfect creator. We cannot know how tormenting it is to endure imperfection as a perfect being. So if, you, if it's a perfect being, we don't know how tormenting it is for God to sit back as a perfect being and watch his creation 
behave imperfectly. The only reference we have is when our kids act a fool. I told y'all that earlier. You know how that make you feel. You ever been somewhere? <laughs> and, and, you know, you're trying to talk to somebody, but your kids is in the background acting like baby's kids. Just, I mean, acting like they had no home training whatsoever. I mean, just thinking of bad stuff to do. Creating. They're not creators, but they creators right there, and they creating bad stuff to do. And it's so embarrassing. And you have to tell the person, wait, hold on one minute. What I tell y'all? You Negroes, what I tell y'all? Ooh, when you get home, you're going to go, you know, and sometimes the home threat don't work. You know, this new crop of kids will just take the whooping. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. For this fun right now, it's worth it. It's going to be worth it. After all, it's going to be worth it in the end. That's how I was. I was like, I would take the whipping for this foolishness right here. This is going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. My dad would try to, he had have to try to kill me to hurt me. And I'd still be thinking, I, I, I think I'll take that. Because this is some super fun. <laughs> And just acting a fool and you just embarrassing you. And that makes you feel some kind of way in front of other people, right? But that's our only reference. But just imagine a perfect being creating a perfect creature that's in his image and his likeness, but continuously straying away from him. And not just straying away from him, but going after false gods. Now, just imagine you're the creator of everything. And they're going after sticks and trees made by hand, made up gods, demons. Yeah. So just imagine what that makes God feel like. So we cannot know how tormenting that is to see his creation malfunction and cause a chaotic domino effect really angers the creator of good and perfect things. If he's the creator of good and perfect things and you are wilding, that angers him. Psalms 5 and 5 says, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all, how much is all? All, all workers of iniquity. You know, and that's the thing about a creator. You know, a creator creates. So, you know, you look at the Old Testament, God was just wiping out thousands of folks at a time. Just, I'll make some more. I'll make some more. We all just, we worried about them individually, and we, we can't think like a creator. Oh, this group ain't going to act right? New group. Oh, the earth is trash? They jacked up earth. Now the man has no authority, not even in his own home. They've all been emasculated. Now the women have been put up. Now the spirit of Jezebel has taken over the whole world. Whoosh. I'll make a new heaven and new earth. That's what he said. And he's creator. That's why you go before him fear and trembling yeah. somebody I ah, see you making God sound you know I, I'm not gonna I, I just can't accept no God like that I can't you don't have to but when your numbers call you're gonna have to face him None of us can ever know the pain of the cross that Jesus bore and how it felt to God to see an innocent son pay for the sins of evil men. So because you can't be perfect and because you have sin, God sent his son to pay the price 
of your sin with his own life to give his life so you wouldn't have to give yours so you could be with God forever. To be rejected by your own creation has consequences. The greater the being, listen y'all, the greater the punishment. So if he's perfect, the antithesis or opposite of perfection would be hell. And as perfect as he is, hell will be the opposite. As humans, we can't understand this, but God's word has promised it. Matthew 27 and 51, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks tore because of God's anger when his son carried our sins to the cross. When his son died, he himself in human form died for our sins. The Bible said the veil of the temple tore from top to bottom, the earth quaked. The earth shook so hard that graves opened and dead people came out. Because the power of Christ is the power of resurrection. So when his blood drizzled down the cross and got into the ground, life went in the ground. And graves began to shake and dead bodies began to be reanimated because life went in the ground. But as humans, we can't understand this. It's hard for us to understand. Rocks tore. Rocks tore. Rent. Summary! God is a God of love, but he is also just. The New Testament is great. I love it. I love every. I love the Bible. Period. New Testament is great, but some of you need to finally grow up and read some of the old, and read a lot of the old, so you can get to know God. That's how you get to know it. You'll get to know it, and you'll get to know that God ain't playing with you. That's what you're gonna get to know. He's not playing with you. He's not playing with how you feel. He don't care about your philosophy. He don't care about what you learned from the internet. He ain't thinking about you like that. You will learn that he is creator of all things. Read that Old Testament. Genesis from beginning to end and then after you finish it, repeat it. And you're going to learn something you probably didn't know. God ain't playing with us. If a person refuses the remedy, they must contend with the penalty. I mean, you, you're all broken up, man. I just don't believe it. But they have, there's a remedy. But if the person refuses the remedy, they must contend with the penalty. Jesus is the only way for man to escape the payment for his sins. People that reject him will burn in hell forever. It may seem harsh. And even unthinkable to our natural mind because we are all former sinners. But we can't look at it like that. Look at somebody and say, stop looking at it like that. We cannot use our human emotion to decide what is too harsh and not fair. Your human emotion, how many times it got you in trouble? When you thought she was the right girl and you wanted to, your human emotion. Then you found out she was a witch. Old dude was buxom and robust and <laughs> tall, dark, and handsome. And your human emotion said, give him your number. 
But when he texts you 666, <laughs> you gonna trust your emotions? You gonna trust your emotions? When you went into the convenience store and played lotto, your emotions told you 35, 37, 11, and 10. Them your emotions. And it didn't work. You ever won. Never. You won $10 and bet that back. <laughs> so technically, you've never won. It's your emotions. Got mad on your job. Was making good money, but got mad at somebody. I can't stand them. Oh, they make me sick. Oh, they, they call you an office and say, well, we just been kind of watching you and, and look like we making you sick. So we're going to let you go. You went home and bills started piling up. Boom, 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 boom. That was your emotions. There was no logic involved in that. Logic would have told you to shut up and get paid and do your job that you, you agreed to. You agreed. You agreed. You took the job. You. What is wrong with you? Y'all, excuse me. I've been, you know, dealing with some crazy folks. Finding stuff wrong with the job that's paying them. Let me find something wrong with it. It's a job. There's always something wrong with a job. Because instead of sleep, you got to go. That's the first thing wrong with it. I have to do it. I have to wake up and do it. That's the first thing wrong. Working is punishment to mankind because of the sin in the garden. You're not... Uh, that's why you take a vacation. You take a vacation because it's the opposite of working. That's your time, the vacation. When you're working, you're working for somebody else. Even when you're working for yourself, you got to work. I work for myself and need days off from y'all. <laughs> Focus kill you. It's work. We'd all love to just wake up and stay in bed every day. Oh, just put an IV in me so I don't even have to get up and eat. And give me a pamper. I don't plan to ever get up. <laughs> I ain't getting up from here. No, you got to work. <laughs> it's punishment because man sinned. God was going to let everything just come to man. But man sinned, now man have to get it. You got to get it out the ground. Amen. And you got to go do what somebody's telling you to do. Don't y'all hate that? This generation, they don't like nobody telling them what to do. The turnover rate at these jobs, dudes don't last weeks. I don't like this job. Why? Because, man, they always try to make you do something. <laughs> try to make you do what you agreed to? <laughs> Did you read the job description? What a loser. Dude, you know how much of a loser you are? And I hate that women have to deal with these guys. That's your husband, and he's a loser. The creator is the only one that is truly just because he made things that way. Because he loves us and wants us to escape eternal damnation, he gave his son to die. All we have to do is accept it and what? Live accordingly. Live like you accepted it. But because so many are, take a breath, 
wrathful, idolatrous, hateful, vengeous, vengeful, envious, perverted, narcissistic, and covetous, they will choose penalty instead of penance. They would rather live for themselves instead of live for God. They choose God's enemies over his love. They choose to strive for temporary riches and fame instead of an eternity of unmatched wealth and prominence. They would rather anger God than please him. They crucify him over and over with their rejection of his way and support those in opposition against him. Leftists, feminists, BLM, LGBTQ, advocates, abortion activists, and even certain elections are drawing out the enemies of the cross. That's what they're all here for, to draw out the enemies of the cross. What makes you the enemy of the creator? Living lifestyles of sin and supporting those that are undoing his plan for mankind. The earthly armies of Armageddon. Remember your parents told y'all about the war of Armageddon where people were going to try to fight against God? They're going to fight against Jesus? That didn't even seem possible. 40, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, that didn't seem possible. People are going to actually see heavenly beings come down and going to try to fight against it? That didn't even seem possible, but now it does. It does because they think they have power. All these witches, witchcraft, new age, they're going to use the crystals and the burn the sage and fight against the earthly armies of Armageddon are being formed as we speak. The leftists, the feminists, the BLM, the LGBT advocates, the abortion activists, all of these folks are drawing them out and getting them ready. Those that are opponents of God's church and Christ's way are taking their side right now. Isn't that something? Some of the ones that was filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and power are lined up with the LGBT, the BLM, mm -hmm, the feminists, the abortionists. Mm -hmm. lined up with them <laughs> there is no more gray area no one will be on the fence the strong delusion of our world is dividing us into two categories those for or against the creator of all things those that love the creator will fight for his statutes his truth but those against him that love themselves their skin color their sinful lifestyle practices, their political agendas, their Jezebel spirit, their immoral debauchery, their right to kill unborn babies, their LGBTQ lifestyle, their idolatry and false god worship, and all of their worldliness will war against the lamb at his return. God gave us all a choice. Whose side are you truly on? Matthew 25 and 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the what? <laughs> I highlighted that word on purpose. Because what is a kingdom without rulership? God is the ruler and we will inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of this world. So this is a whole new thing, a whole brand new creation that the creator is making just for us. We don't know how we'll be living. We definitely don't know how we will feel because the way we feel now is with a human body, which we won't have. So we won't know how this is going to go. We just have to trust him because what he gives us now, some of the pleasure we get from him now feels so good. I trust you with my eternity. If you can make this, hmm. it was prepared for you from the foundation of this world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. 
naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee? When did this happen? When were you thirsty and we gave you to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? Or when saw we saw thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And then the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, this is why you got to love your neighbor as yourself. Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So the way you treat people is the way you treat him. But then shall he say to the, them on the left, depart from me, ye cursed into, how long is it going to last? Is it going to just burn you up and you be burnt up? No. Cursed into everlasting, because now you're immortal. You can't be killed by a flame. You can't be killed by fire. You're immortal. Your soul will live forever. That was God showing favor on us to give us that. But you took it to the wrong place. You still get to live forever. But now you are living in everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen? Everyone just bow your heads. And I, you know, the one thing I want to make sure of is I want to make sure I'm where I need to be. And we all need to make sure we need to, we're where we need to be. But I'm giving you this opportunity now to make the choice. This is the choice. Do you choose Christ or do you choose eternal damnation? I'm going to ask you, if anyone in here that is not saved or a believer and you want to choose Christ today I want you to just stand up right where you are everyone keep your heads bowed whoever it is not going off anyone else but this is a decision that you need to make whoever you are keep your heads bowed Thank you, back there in the back. Keep your heads bowed. Anyone else? Just stand up, here you are. We don't all pray to prayer, but I wanna see who you are. This is the way God led me to go this morning. I'm the pastor, so I go his way. Thank you over there. I see you. Who else? Anyone else? Not, I ain't trying to scare you, but we are at the end. If there was any doubt in your mind, and we just have to do things different as the end approaches, I want to make sure you're right. Thank you. Says anyone else? Thank you, brother. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Thank you, brother. Anyone else? I'm saying thank you like you're doing it for me, but you're not. This is for him. This is giving your heart to God and accepting the penalty. I mean, accepting payment for the penalty from him. And this is given every part of your heart to him. Every part. I want you to have every part. Anyone else? Anyone else? Those of you that are standing, just lift your hands up. We just want to be sure. And all of you in here that are believers in Jesus Christ, please pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for these that have stood, that are giving their lives to you today. 
to escape eternal punishment, but to accept eternal life. Forgive them of their sins, Father God, that they confess before you right now. And any unworthiness, any feelings of, or thoughts of unworthiness, Father God, I pray right now that you will fill their hearts with your spirit and let them know that they belong to you. So while you're standing, just confess your sins to God and ask Christ to just come in your heart. Father God, forgive me. Come into my heart. From this day forward, I give you my heart. Fill me with your spirit. I don't want to live without you. I don't want to walk without you. I don't want to live in sin. I don't want to be guilty of sin. I want you in my heart. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, your voice, you talk to him. You talk to him. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not leaving this place without your presence, God. I'm not living another day without you in my heart. Hallelujah. 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 And Father, we just thank you. Come on, everyone, lift your hands. We just thank you. Everyone stand to your feet. Come on. We'll stand with them. Hallelujah. And lift your hands. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to come and gather and hear how you feel about your creation and how you feel about sin. And Father God, we just thank you for truth in this hour. And we stand in your presence even now. Give us what we need. Give us what we need. Come on, just a few minutes, just stand there. This is the part that we miss, the stillness, being in awe of the creator of all things. Just being in awe. Doesn't have to be emotional or music involved. We can just be in awe. How great and powerful and almighty is he. Hallelujah. 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 And every soul that has come to you today, God, we pray that you will keep them in growth, in reading your word. Keep them diligent in this hour to seek you until they find all that they need to find. Father God, help them to be steadfast and strong and not, let, not allow the enemy to take anything that has happened today away from them. Father God, they are born into your kingdom right now. And we give you glory and honor for it. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving. Thank you, Father God, for delivering. Thank you, Father God, for coming for those that you came for. And we'll give you the praise, glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.